Then predictive is the third uh, attribute. So a predictive key risk indicator, well, we want it to predict to be a leading indicator. So to give us an early indicator that there's a problem coming up, there are signs and symptoms, something is about to happen, we want to try and get ahead of events. Um, so that's the predictive nature of it. And we want to know that it does actually work. So of course, this is where you've got key risk indicators that have been used many times, such as your perhaps your core set or some therapeutic specific ones, um, you'll be able to see over time as you use them again and again within studies that actually they do predict, they do make sense, they do give you some useful information. And of course, that's what you what you want from a key risk indicator. So we've got a number of examples here. Um, firstly, a lagging and a leading indicator. So a lagging indicator after two months, we discover that 20 blood samples were lost in transportation. Of course, that's a significant problem at that point. If we could get a signal earlier, so for example, measuring it after a week rather than after two months, after a week, we discover four blood samples are lost. Well, that gives us an earlier signal that hopefully we can avoid the 20 blood samples being lost. And um, a key risk indicator example, a risk of SAE underreporting, if that's the risk or what might the KRI look like, perhaps two SAEs per patient visit less than expected. So there you can see the threshold and we're measuring SAEs per patient visit. And of course, we want it to be to be signaling that threshold to be at such a place that it's it's firing, it's signaling in time to initiate some sort of mitigation actions.